chair nearby if you need it for your balance practices. Spread out your toes. And then inhale, bring the arms to shoulder level. Exhale, hands to your chest. Stretch out to the front, keeping your shoulders down. And then bring your hands behind. Ask your fingers together, lift your heart, stretch your head back, and then pivot over. So come into that forward bend as much or as little as you need this morning. <clears throat> Let your hands come toward your head, your head down toward your legs. Keep breathing deep, lift your sitting bones. And then with your chin in, lift the ribs, sitting bones down as you round your way up and into the upper body for the back bend. Stretch your head back, lengthen your spine, spread out your toes, and relax. And then inhaling, come upright, release your arms, take a moment feeling that inner focus, checking out what's going on in your body. And then again, inhaling, reach to the sides, Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, keep those shoulders down, and bring your hands behind to clasp the opposite leg. Heart high, stretch your head back, pivot over. You can bring your palms together or keep them apart. Your choice, how you want your shoulders to work. And again, just deepen as much or as little into the forward bend as you need today. And relax. And then again, wind your way up, keeping your chin in until the last, and then lift it a little bit toward the ceiling. Stretch your head back, lift your heart, press your hands down. And again, just as much or as little back bend as you'd like, remember to keep it focused in that upper body. And then inhale to the top again, and release. Take a moment, feeling how that circulation and energy are flowing, to get ready for our lateral motion. So remember, shoulders and hips stay facing the front on this one. Arms out, palms to the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, pass the hands and clasp them. Bring your arms back along your ears, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, legs in and up, lean to the side. So get into your side, stretch as much through those ribs as you like. Press the foot down, go a little bit more emphatic side stretch, and out through the top of your body. And then inhale back to the center, keep the shoulders down, stretch your hands on other wrist and front. And again, shoulders staying down, body staying facing forward as you lean over to that opposite side. And again, just get those ribs stretching apart, pushing the foot down, the head and hands back. And then again, inhaling, come back up and release. So take a moment feeling your ribs a little bit more open and your body a little more empty. <clears throat> Keep everything aligned. We're going into our twist. So bring your arms out, palms toward the ceiling. Arms over your shoulders. Keep those shoulders down, of course. Keep the arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, stretch up and turn either direction. Whole body turn. Lengthen up as you breathe. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. And then come on over in your forward bend. So twist forward bends feel a little different. Just keep being aware of what your body is telling you, how it's working. See if both sides are evenly into your feet or maybe not as you lean to one side. And then inhaling, come on back up, stay in your twist. Lift your heart as you look toward the ceiling. Remember, not a lot of work in that lower back while you're twisting. Elbows back, chest high, shoulder blades toward your waist. And then inhale up, exhale back toward the center and switch your arms around. Shoulders down, sitting bones down, stretch it up, and exhale to the other side. Lengthening through the spine, breathe, and then exhale, pivoting over. 
And again, deepen as much or as little as your body wants on this side. Keep relaxing. See if your feet are both facing front <clears throat> and your weight is even on both feet. And when you're ready, work your way slowly back up, staying in your twist. Elbows back, chest high, and moving your pelvic head over. So upper body back bend, not a lot of work in that lower back. And then inhale to the top, exhale to the center. Arms up, shoulders down, and let's swan back. So bring your arms straight out, pivot, keeping your back as flat as you can. So your hip joints are that focal point for your pivot. Stretch out through the top of your head, through the sitting bones, through the fingertips, and then drop into right dog, just hanging. Think about letting the hips, sitting bones go up so those hamstrings on the back of your legs get a little stretch. Back in your chin, move your neck around. You can bring your hands behind your legs for a little extra back stretch. And then release your arms, let them hang as you slowly wind back into neck. And if you're going to use your chair for our balance practice, you can do that. So we're just going to do our warm up first. And remember, if you're balance challenged, you can always stick with that level at all times. We're going to keep that outside of your foot parallel to either the side of the chair, the side of the mat, or the wall if you want to have the wall next to you. And then lift your toes, get the base of the toes connected, spread the toes out, but don't flip with them or you lose that base connection. Make sure the heel is evenly connected as well. Keep lifting through the inner leg with that arch lifting, and that gets that whole bottom of your foot really connected for good support. So everything should be that inner rotation so the ankle, knee, and hip are lined up, shoulder as well. And hips staying open, sitting bones down, ribs in and up for that core to support you, and crown to the seat. As you do that, you can keep your hand on the chair or on your side, either way, it doesn't matter. So sink into that foot that you grounded, and then just bring the other one up. Now remember, if you rotate it a little bit inward, that foot won't cross over towards your other leg. Makes it a little bit easier to keep your alignment, especially through the hips. And then we're going to work the ankle because we want to make sure our ankles stay flexible because they're very important actually in our balance practices. So circling and pointing and flexing a few times and then releasing. And remember, you can keep that foot closer to the floor if you want to. So chair to the other side, aligning again so that you've got everything straight through the ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder. Ribs in and up, core connected, getting that support for your spine, chest open, and heart expanding. Shoulders down, crown reaching up, sink into your grounded foot. Get everything aligned, all that rotation on the thighs so that the things in your legs stay aligned and bring the other foot. And again, keep it by the floor or bring it up as high as you'd like. And wherever it is, just circle the ankle again, making sure that we've got some flexibility there. Remember, you're spreading out through your toes, not gripping them, and the crown is reaching up. So everything is nice and straight. You can keep that hand on the chair. It's perfectly fine. And then release. And then we'll go back to the first side and align up again. So you should know what you're doing with that lining up by now. So go ahead and focus on making sure that you're really nicely grounded. That whole side is nice and connected. And then either keeping your hand on the chair or bringing that arm straight up above your shoulder, you're going to bring the other hand out to the side with the palm. So this hand can be down or it can be up, giving you some nice length in your side. We're gonna go into dancer, so a little back bend. So make sure that that whole ankle, knee, hip, shoulder is nicely lined up 
This side is open at the shoulder, so that palm comes facing forward as you open that palm. And then sink into your grounded foot. Let me tie my chair a little bit. Sink into your grounded foot and lift the foot behind you. So remember, inner rotation so you're not crossing that ankle over the back of your leg. And then hold the ankle for the foot and bring the knees back together. You can stay there if that's enough, or you can pivot at that hip joint and push the knee behind you and the arm forward in front of you so that you're counterbalancing as you go into that position. And then you bring the foot up as high or not as you want, and you go into a little bit of a back bend in the upper body as you go into that position. So breathing, maximize or minimize for your position. And then bringing the knees back together, release the foot, and if the hand is in the air, bring it down. If you're using your chair, again, it goes to the opposite side. So take a moment, feel your body getting back into mountain pose, connecting into both feet evenly. Make sure <coughs> always everything is nicely aligned. Getting ready for our second side. So again, Round that foot, make sure the base of the toes are nicely connected into the chair if you want, or bring it up next to your ear. Now remember, keep that shoulder down if you are bringing that arm up. You want to feel that stretch through the whole side, and make sure your ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder all line up nicely. Other hand comes palm open to the front, and you sink into your grounded foot. Get stabilized there, stay there if that's where you are. And when you're ready, bring your foot up, pull the ankle or the arch, and pull the knee back in. So you want to make sure you are not pulling the leg out to the side. And again, you can just stay there, or you can push the foot into your hand behind you, pivot at the hip, bringing that arm in front a little bit further forward. So remember, it's a little upper body back then as you're in that position. So that when you're in the position, your chest is kind of leaning as you pivot at the hips and come into a little bit of a back bend, raising that foot behind you only as much as you want to. And then again, while you're in your position, just breathe, maximize or minimize. Remember, if you need to step out and back in, just go through the same sequence, allowing yourself, oops, I'm not focused on my foot. So get your foot down, get your body into alignment, and then move into the position, because if you don't, you do like I just did in front of And then coming back upright, knees together, release your foot and your hand, and you're back in mountain pose. So as you get back there, go ahead and feel what's going on internally. A little bit more work through that hip pelvis area, maybe a little bit more through the spine. Check out your core, you should get a lot of good support through the core. So one more balance practice this morning. So you may find if you're using the chair, it's going to be a little easier if you turn toward the chair and you can keep your hands on the chair while you're in the position. We're going to do warrior three. A warrior three is like a T-shaped position with your body. So again, starting in your mountain pose. Everything aligned, get that alignment through your legs. Get the connection into the bottom of your foot. Spread the toes. Lift up through the arch, up through the crown. Make sure that core is connected so ribs are in and up, supporting your spine. And then the pivot is at the hip joint. So you can do several things. You can keep your hands on the hips and just kind of first put your thumbs into that hip crease before you put your hands on the chair. Or you can clasp your hands behind you, or you can bring your hands out to the side, palms down. And then you're going to bring the foot that's not grounded a little bit behind you, and then keeping the upper body lined up with that leg. You're going to pivot at that hip joint and bring your body until it's parallel to the floor. So your hands are either out next to your hips, clasped behind you, or on the chair as you raise that leg till you're parallel to the floor. 
So remember, the more you've got that leg rotated inward that you're pivoting from, the more things stay aligned through your body. Try not to lift this hip to the front, or to the outside rather, as you're pivoting, because that'll bring your balance out of alignment as well. And if you're really comfortable there, after you get into your position, you can bring your arms either out to the side or along your ears over your shoulders. But that's much more challenging for your balance and many people find it much more difficult on their shoulders. So whatever position you're in, just keep finding it, practicing it, pushing out through that foot behind you, making sure the knee on that leg extended is out to the floor and the toes are pointing down and your chest and shoulders are even to the front. And then keeping your body aligned, pivot back up into mountain pose, and you should be all again moving. So once more, breathing deeply. You know what we need to do next. The opposite side. So it's exactly the same. If you're comfortable with your hands on the chair, doing that initial pivot and putting your hands there to support you as you lift that opposite leg, you can do that. I mean, parallel, bringing your body into the position. Or if you're comfortable with your hands clasped behind you, kind of rotate the shoulders open and push your hands towards your feet and then begin your pivot. But again, make sure that everything's aligned as you pivot into that perpendicular to the floor position. Your hands can be palms toward the floor out at your shoulder level or extended over your shoulders. And remember, if you move, move slowly, and don't go too far for where your body is comfortable because that leverage of the arms in front of you makes it much more challenging to be in the position. So wherever you are, find your position, maximize it, keep moving into it exactly the same way each time, wherever you need to be. And then pivoting back up, Bring both feet down and into mountain pose. Take a moment to feel your body. And if you've used your chair, you can move it aside. So, a lot of core work as we do our balance practices. So, kind of notice how that's been working for you. And then we're just going to stretch up and pivot over and come to child's pose to get ready for a few back bends. So go ahead and find your position, use your padding, whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable this morning. Breathe deep, just relax. So feel that back getting a nice stretch if you've got your knees together or bring the knees apart if you need to be breathing a little bit more easily after our balance practices. And then inhale, and bring your legs out to the front. So staff position, sitting bones connected, use your core for support, and roll all the way onto your back. So take a moment there, just a little reclined integration. Get your sacrum connected, get your feet about hip width apart, and turn your hands, palms up, and get those shoulders nicely connected down. Take a few moments to breathe as well. Remember, even though we're on the floor, we still want to be in essentially mountain pose. So ribs toward your spine and up toward your heart, getting that core connected, lower back supported. And then we're going to press that lower back down a little bit more, sitting bones toward your heels so that sacrum connects. And then bend your knees, and bring the heels right near your sitting bones. So remember, you've got that alignment so that the knees are going straight up, not turning out to the side. So make sure that you've got that inner rotation at the top of the thighs, just like in all other positions. And then keeping the back down, the hands next to your hips, we're going to exhale and press the back down, and then hip bones coming up as you inhale, 
come into bridge position, coming out to your shoulder blades, not your neck. So make sure the back of the head is supporting you, your shoulders and upper body are supporting you, and your feet are supporting you evenly. So toes and heels evenly with the knees staying straight up toward the ceiling. And then you can press your hands down and stay there, or you can come up more onto the tops of your shoulders. So clasp your hands underneath, bring one little finger inside that bottom one, and then work up onto the tops of your shoulders, lifting your hips and ribs and chest for a little bit more. Make sure you're still on your head, not your shoulders. I mean, not your neck. You are on your shoulders. So the shoulders support you, the feet support you, and everything else arches up into that back bend. And then to release, you release your hands, you release your shoulders, you bring your heart down, your ribs down, and your whole spine down. Take a moment there, just feel your body, let it relax. And we're going to do the second side, but we're going to clasp the hands the opposite way so the other little finger will be on the inside this time. So you're pressing down through that hole outside of both hands and your arms as you go up into the bridge. So go ahead again, make sure your heels are near your sitting bones, knees straight up, ribs and um, lower back pressing slightly down as you exhale. And then as you inhale, go ahead and lift the hips, lift the ribs, coming up um, to your shoulder blades. You can keep your hands there, you can keep the palms down, pressing in, or you can do that clasp of your hands under your hips, and then straighten your elbows, press your arms and hands more into the floor, and then work up onto your shoulders so that your tops of your shoulders are more supportive and you're still on your head, not your neck. Hips are lifting, knees are right in front of the hips, and the ankles are lined up with the knees and hips as well. Chest high, ribs high, hips high, as much into that back bend as your body is. Breathe, press as much into the arms as feels right for you. And then if your hands are clasped, release them, palms down. Release those shoulders back down. With that heart area coming down first, then your ribs, then your spine, and relax. And go ahead and extend those legs out if you'd like. Hands, palms up, a little reclined integration to feel that spine after your back bend. And then we're going to do a twist. So as we go into this next position, just allow yourself to get your whole body situated into the mat and arms out to two position. So press your whole lower back down and again, bend your knees, bring the knees in towards your hips. Slide the sitting bones a little bit more towards your heels, get the back connected and then lift your feet so that your knees are up. We're going to cross one leg over the other. This is going to be a little bit more intense than our usual bent knee twist. So if you don't want that through your lower back, you can go ahead and not look to this. And then hands can be palms up or down. If they're down, your shoulders will stay just a little bit more connected more easily, but it can be palms up as well. And then we're going to roll over to the side, bringing that crossed over leg toward the floor. And just let them go as far as you want. You can bring the foot down and give yourself a little support or you can put some padding under it if that's too much in that hip joint for you or the lower back. So go ahead and go as deeply into it, turning your head to look at the arm behind you as you relax through the shoulders, both of them down. And again, maximize that as much or as little as your body wants and needs to see. Take a breath. Just relax. And remember, if you practice these twists on your own, hold them a little longer because they'll keep releasing through your spine a little bit more as you relax. Perfect. 
We don't have time for that this morning. So heels toward your hips and roll it onto your back. Uncross that leg and bring both feet down. Realign that lower back and get ready for our other side. Feel that circulation through your body, especially through that lower back. Now we're going to sit in bones toward the heels a little bit more, getting that back connected before you go ahead and cross the ankle with the knee over the opposite knee. Angles toward each other. And again, hands, palms up or down, your choice. And roll the knees over to that other side. So as you go, remember, in twists, you're always moving your whole spine as you move, not keeping those hips separate from your spine. So the whole spine and knees will twist to the side while you turn your head to look to the opposite side. So keeping your shoulders down, that'll be your middle back, hip turning, neck and shoulders. And the more your knee comes toward the floor, that's the lower back getting twisted. So remember, be careful not to move the sacrum and the spine separately, but to keep them working together. Take a breath. Just exhale, relaxing. Maximize or minimize. Remember, twists are always personal practice, doing what's right for your body. And when you're ready to release that, once again, kind of pull your heels back toward your hips as you roll onto your back and uncross feet to the feet. And then again, extend your legs out as you just notice all that twist energy through. So we're going to do one little thing before our relaxation, a big back bend in the upper body. And as we do this, it's up to you how deeply you want to go into it, or if you even do. This is called fish. So you want to keep your legs extended. You want to bring your hands next to your hips, palms down, and then bring your thumbs underneath you, your palms underneath you, and let your sitting bones and hips come down onto the backs of your hands. Pull your elbows way in toward your side at your waist. So that kind of moves your shoulders a little bit further toward your head and down into the mat. So you're going to keep the shoulders there and you're going to feel that heart start lifting. So if this is enough for you, you can stay in this position, that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to press into the forearms, elbows, and hands and bring your whole upper body up and look at your feet. So your elbows are in supporting you, forearms are supporting you. And then you're gonna lift your ribs and chest and look up toward the ceiling. And you can stay there, supported, or you can bring the top of your head back toward the floor behind you, as much or as little as you want. If you can and want to, you can bring the top of your head all the way to the mat. Lift your heart and chest and ribs. If you want to get out at any point, lift your head and bring your body back down and release into corpse position. If you're up and you want to do a little bit more while you're supported on your head with your body arched from your sitting bones to the top of your head into that back thing, you can move your hands out from under you and bring the arms up either extended toward the ceiling or with the base of your palms at your ribs, fingertips up in prayer position. So maximize or minimize that inversion in your back bend as much or as little as your body wants to. If your hands are out before you come down, bring them down, press into your forearms and elbows and arms. And again, lift your head, tuck your chin in, and then roll your whole body back onto you. If you want, before you do your relaxation, you can press your back down, bring your heels in, slide your sitting bones toward your heels, and give yourself a little bit of a release from that back bend with the knees toward your heart, a little appreciative hug, and then returning to your relaxation posture. So remember, 
Corpse position, hands palms up slightly away from your side, shoulders sinking into the mat. Slide the sitting bones maybe a little toward your heels, getting that sacrum nicely connected. And then just relax through the legs and the lower body. You can, if that lower back feels strained, keep your knees slightly bent, keep your knees straight up, or slightly toward each other to give yourself a little support, or put a pad, pillow or pad under that. And soften your face and jaw, relax your shoulders, and breathe. So as you get into your relaxation posture, just feel any tightness in your body. Let it go. Breathe through your whole torso. Lots of work there today. Exhale the tension. Let things soften and release. And just scan through your body, moving as you need to. Find that position of comfort for your relaxation. Let your body grow heavier as you breathe. Exhaling deep into the earth. Feeling that support beneath you. Just releasing any tension left in your body. And as your body relaxes completely, just let Mother Earth support you and allow your mind to release thoughts of your body. As you breathe, just notice thoughts come into your mind. Just let them go as you exhale. Sending the thoughts away like a cloud to the horizon, drifting out of sight, cloud of mind. And with each breath, just relaxing your body, releasing your thoughts, allowing everything just to float, turning inward, relaxing completely, supported by the earth. Your mind just released into the clouds. And your awareness can release both your body and your mind. And turn inward. Find the peace within. Fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. Just be in peace. And if you're in the mood to relax, just go ahead and continue relaxing as long as you would like. Otherwise, begin drawing energy and awareness back to the room, to your body. And as you breathe deeply, just begin moving your body gently, stretching, allowing everything to move however it needs. Give yourself a quick stretch. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, bend your knees, draw your heels toward your hips, press your sitting bones toward your heels, getting your spine nice and long, draw your knees up, wrapping your arms around, giving yourself that good hug of appreciation. And when you've had enough hug and appreciation, just let your body release. Letting yourself know you appreciate your body's work yoga, in yoga today and the work your body does for you every day. And then rolling to the side, 
sitting back up, just prepare for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me this morning.